Hello interwebs, I hope you are doing well and finally we have reached the end of my reviews of the Infinity Train series. Yes, for those of you who don't know, I have been reviewing every single season of the Infinity Train, which is this wonderful little gem of a series that I've really come to love on HBO Max that are basically 10 minute episodes uh, told over 10 episode seasons that tell individual stories within each season all set on the Infinity Train, which is a train, spoilers for the first season, you haven't seen it by the way, but an Infinity Train is basically a train where people come to, they get transported there it's mystical magical each card is its own whole universe and people get sent there to sort of work out their own um, issues and if they they get a number imprinted on their hand representing their sort of emotional growth and when they hit zero they get to get off the train so it's sort of this like wonderful show about empathy and how we build empathy and how we work through mental uh, issues and things like that also the police are making noise and almost making me have a heart attack in the middle of the review um, so there's that, <laughs> but also um, just a brilliant, uh, I think just an overall brilliant show. And, and it's a show that is uh, not, is very economical with its time. It, Now, I give all of that praise up front in this review because this is season four of the show, and after this season, the show is canceled. And I ultimately have to say, while I did like this season, I did enjoy it, I do think it is the weakest season of the show, and I am ultimately a little bit disappointed that this is the season that the show went out on. Now, that is by no means the fault of the writers, but it, it was definitely one of the weaker seasons of the show, despite some of the things that I think they really took some risks on, and I really appreciated that, but ultimately feel like it, it led the show to feel a little bit um, less, less impactful as previous seasons. Let's get into it. So this this whole season basically revolves around something a little bit different. Instead of having one character come onto the train and having to deal with their issues, uh, or a denizen of the train or something like that, to this season we have two characters who come on at the same time are intricately intricately linked. We have Ming-Gi and Ryan, um, who get sent on the train and are basically two friends who one friend, it, they both like have grown up together, been friends forever, one friend wants to go off and join a band and like go off to New York and is very like carefree and does whatever he wants. The other one is like, I plan out on my life. I'm going to go to college. But they both really do vibe with each other, but they just don't communicate with each other about what their wants are, what their needs are. And they, their personalities are very disparate. Um, and yet they bounce off of each other well when they're working together. But so far they haven't been working together, hence why they're on the train. And the show makes a big point to point out that these two are linked. Their numbers are linked together as opposed to um, uh, them each individually having to work out their problems. And I really enjoyed that twist on this formula, that it was something new for the series. And I liked seeing that this was a show that was about how their lack of communication caused them to constantly go back and forth in their development because they weren't talking to each other. They were just sort of putting their own presumptions, expectations on the other person instead of listening to each other. Again, this is very much the, the show does, talks about empathy and being able to understand someone else. I liked how this was evoked with the number because every so often the characters, they both would get some development and their numbers would go down because they would learn a lesson. They would actually talk to each other, but then ultimately they would start going back to not listening to each other again and the number would go right back up and stay right where it was at the beginning, the same number over and over and over again. And so I liked that this show is very much talking, showing like their lack of communication just sets them back. And it's when they talk and actually speak to each other that they learn. Um, and so I thought that was all wonderfully done. The other thing too that I really liked was, and this is also leading into some of the disappointments, was clearly this season was meant to be building up some more mythology for the train as well. Because a lot of changes have happened on the train. Mingi and Ryan come on with uniforms. They they get uniforms when they come on the train, whereas opposed to in previous seasons of Infinity Train, people just come on with the clothes that they're they're given. Um, also, we see one one the um, sort of main head of the train is now just one. He has one personality. Again, sort of highlighting subtly these themes of people not talking to each other because one one has been split in two. But all this stuff sort of happens in the background of the series, and we have there's other little bits and pieces. And the episode where the mythology grows, like where we see they get their stuff back, there's something going on on the train, the uh, former uh, conductor, the evil conductor from season one, appears and sort of says like, oh, things, we're all on our own now. So there's clearly some mythology going on in the background, and I like the show building that up in the background. I thought that was very cool to sort of like the characters that we came in love and the place that we came to love was what did have some stuff going on, but the show was still very much focused on these two main characters. That was cool. The disappointment, though, is the show's canceled. So all this stuff doesn't get answered this season. And so we're just going to kind of be left with like, well, stuff's happening. 
and I'll never get to know, which is kind of an unsatisfying feeling to to sort of end on because it's a cool idea, but there's ultimately there's a little bit of resentfulness at some of the writers because the show was apparently I was reading, um, it got canceled after season two. They got a season three. They knew they were on the bubble. They didn't expect to get a season four, and then just with season four decided to go like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna go with this big mythology storyline, and ultimately knowing that they were possibly on the edge of getting canceled. That being said, I don't want to fault them for being ambitious or taking a big swing. So it's not something I'm really too upset at them at. I, I can't fault creators for being like, well, I want to tell this story, and I'm gonna try and tell it, and hopefully I get to tell it. Um, but it is one of those like, ugh, I'm a little bit frustrated at that because it's something going forward. The rest of the season, though, while I like some of the ideas, and also the, the first episode of the show has this brilliant split-screen uh, uh, stuff going on. That I think the stylistic of this show is clever as ever. But I think, ultimately, the thing that starts to disappoint me in this, episode, in this season is the train doesn't feel as inventive. Some of the places that they visit don't seem as... as interestingly evoked not to say that they aren't uninteresting because there are some interesting cars but it just doesn't seem like so directly correlated to the characters or what's going on with them as much as previous seasons were in like clever and intricate ways they're just usually like weird settings as opposed to this is a weird setting that somehow evokes the theme of what these characters are going through it happens once or twice but not all the time also, the character of Kez, who is a character who comes in who is meant to be, like, their sort of, like, friend on the train, the sort of, like, talking, uh, like, uh, kiosk bell that they befriend, does sort of reflect them in how they never really communicate all that well. Um, she does have sort of similar problems, but she ultimately comes across as a bit more annoying than anything else, which is kind of part of the point of the character. She is supposed to be a little bit annoying, but the episode and series kind of harps on it a little bit too much, and, and ultimately I, I just didn't care much for Kaz all that much. There were a few heartwarming moments that I did come to endear myself to Kaz, uh, especially in one of the episodes where we see how Kaz's friends treat her, but ultimately didn't feel like it was addressed enough within the show and didn't feel as directly correlated to the character's journeys uh, as typically the thematics of the show are capable of tying together as well. And so her journey kind of felt sideways to like on the side of them um, and didn't necessarily uh, build up the thematics of this such a short season as brilliantly as other seasons have. And so when the moments where I was supposed to endear myself to Kez happened, I liked them, but ultimately they sort of get dropped off in favor of um, Mingi and Ryan's storyline, um, which is ultimately kind of disappointing, and so doesn't really uh, fit within this storyline as much. And I think that's ultimately what I kind of have to say on this season of the show, is I liked it. I liked how these characters resolved. I liked the final demon de of the show, to use some fancy words, apparently, that are in my repertoire, um, that uh, that they eventually have come to, like, learn and, and stay together and learn to, like, grow together and they won't leave the train without each other, I think worked very, very well. I just ultimately felt like this season, well, not bad, not a dis not, it's not bad. And it, I think it's actually very, very good. I just don't think it's as close to the highs or as the tightly woven narrativeness that the other seasons have done. And so ultimately, I kind of feel like it's not a bad season. It's just not a high season. Um, and it's kind of a disappointing season to, for the show to go out on, um, ultimately, compared to the rest of the show. So it doesn't leave a bad taste in my mouth. I still think it's well worth watching, but not as strong as previous seasons. But that's my take on Infinity uh, Train Season 4, the final season, sadly, unless something crazy happens, which it's being an Infinity Train could happen. Uh, could get picked up again, um, which I hope it does. But regardless, until then, I hope you had a good time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to my other channel, Jesse Gender, where I do video essay stuff. I also have a Patreon that you can help support me on. But beyond all of that, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you, as always, live long and stay sexy.